Good afternoon. We're here with Brigadier General Terry Bullard, Commander of OSI, to talk about how the creation of Space Force will affect OSI. So right up front, um, OSI will be the investigative service for both the United States Air Force and the United States Space Force. Uh, our secretary has come down uh, and designated one inspector general uh, and one investigative service, OSI, to take care of the equities within the department. And of course, the Department of the Air Force now includes United States Air Force and United States Space Force. And how will that affect our heraldry and our logo and those types of things, sir? I tell you, this has been a big concern and something that uh, certainly jumped out to all of us who have carried a badge for a long time now. Uh, the great news is neither our crest uh, nor our badge will necessitate a change. Uh, both indicate either Office of Special Investigations, which keeps us very uh, neutral and all-encompassing of both of our services, and our badge, if everybody has the opportunity to pull that out and take a look, uh, indicates that we are the investigative service for the Department of the Air Force, which is true. Uh, the one change that we're taking a look at right now is that with our credentials, uh, which may uh, need to change because they designate Air Force on those credentials. Uh, but now that we are uh, actually uh, calling attention to the fact we are the Department of the Air Force's service, we're examining what that change would look like. Great. Um, and then how should we refer to ourselves, sir, now that we are not just the Air Force Office of Special Investigations? So again, another, another question I, I get a lot from the field. Uh, it is our intent to move away from the AFOSI uh, standard that we have used uh, uh, since the mid to late 90s uh, and move ourselves back to uh, the Office of Special Investigations. Uh, within the Department of the Air Force. So we will move back to OSI, which again, I, you know, I call everybody back to our shield, our heraldry, uh, which has always indicated we are OSI. And sir, with all these changes, uh, it seems like you'll require more of our team. Will we be getting more agents to help with this? So fortunately, uh, we are already experiencing that growth under the OSI we need. Um, which is really focused on increasing personnel based on our mission sets, both those that we've historically had and not been manned for and those that we are being asked to do uh, from technology protection to some of the things we'll be doing in other theaters. Um, right now, the propensity of the Space Force is coming from the Air Force that we are already manned to cover. But of course, as the Space Force changes and grows, uh, OSI will continue to look at our manpower needs and will adjust and, and request where we, where we need growth. And the last question I have for you, sir, is how does somebody get selected to be on the Space Force OSI duty? So that process will remain the same. Uh, OSI will continue to um, advertise for our jobs uh, at OSI detachments. Uh, we will still work through the career field managers as we always have. We will still pick our leaders for those units in the same way that we always have. You may find yourself leading or investigating on a United States Air Force base or on a United States Space Force base, but our mission will remain the same and the way we select our personnel and the way we man our units uh, right now will remain the same. And Jen, thanks for the opportunity to do this and thanks for the opportunity to really hopefully put minds at ease that we are absolutely working our way through this slowly, but with a mind to not lose any part of OSI's history or legacy.